Well, we really have been a government that's committed to, to action and to work and to actually getting things done. But we've done so in a very methodical and um, well-planned format. Um, what we've done is certainly since taking office, uh, they're one of the very first agencies that I visited as Minister with responsibility for employment was the National Workforce Development Agency, which is one of the tools the government has to try to really promote training and development of our people to make them uh, better equipped to deal with the challenges in the workplace, the upskilling uh, and the like. And so some of the things that we, we have focused on has been really to look at the agency itself, uh, investing in developing the resources that the agency have uh, or has to be able to deliver on the mandate that it has, and that is to be a partner and a facilitator in the training and development of the people of the Cayman Islands. So we have placed great emphasis on increasing those resources, as I said, when we took office in May of 2013, uh, even though the agency had been established since 2012, they really only had five persons in the department uh, and it didn't have a very strong focus or structure and since then we have tripled the resources as it relates to um, human um, capital in the department itself. We have currently at least 15 persons who are hired and that includes the scholarship secretariat staff as well who um, is a part of the umbrella of the National Workforce Development Agency and we're looking to increase those resources in this coming um, budget year as well. We have budgeted for additional resources because we've realized that the agency has grown, the needs in the community, um, not necessarily has grown, the needs have always been there, but what we're trying to do is really make a targeted impact on addressing those needs from a multitude of um, perspectives. So really making a commitment to developing the agency to be able to, to deliver on its mandate was one of the key strategies that we looked at. We also um, made a commitment to try to address the needs of the unemployed persons in the communities themselves. So one of the first things that um, uh, was launched through, again, the NWDA was the district clinics or the district uh, opportunities for the NWDA staff to meet people in the various districts as opposed to having to come to the central office in Georgetown. So on a monthly basis, they go out to the districts, they meet um, usually at the district libraries or civic centers if the libraries aren't available. So again, making that accessible. We know that many people who are unemployed do not necessarily have the means to get into central Georgetown or if they're in the sister islands, that even becomes even more cumbersome or difficult. So therefore, going out to the districts, including the sister islands, was a big um, mandate of the government to make sure that we're able to try to provide the services to all persons who would be interested and need to take advantage of that and try to get rid of the barrier of not being able to access the, the central location. Another way that we've done that is to really push towards um, making the agency uh, very accessible through technology. We know that um, the use of, of the internet and computers, even though for those families or those homes that may not necessarily have access to the computer themselves, they can access the, um, the website, the registration database through their public libraries. So again, um, making it accessible so now in order to register to take advantage of the opportunities offered through the National Workforce Development Agency, you don't necessarily have to come into the office. You can do so by registering online, um, but if you are somebody that requires additional support, you can get that either by coming into the agency in Georgetown or going to the various district clinics when they are in your respective district. So uh, another area that we, we thought it was really critical to address um, as it relates to looking about the long-term strategy is working more closely with the private sector in developing programs in addressing the needs that they, basically the employment community is saying that is needed. So a big part of this kind of re renewed focus and um, emphasis on developing the National Workforce Development Agency came through the establishment of a NWDA task force. And that was convened back in September of uh, 2013, so very early on in our tenure, pretty much by you know um, the end of summer. We had the framework in place, we convened the task force, and that task force was made up of primarily uh, private sector um, partners, as well as some public sector partners, and of course, representatives from the Ministry of Employment. And essentially, the work of the task force, by the time they had finished their review and report, 
many of those things had already been put in action. And so it goes back to the point I made at the beginning. We're a government about action and getting things done. And so we didn't want to have just another report convened, produced, delivered, and sits on the shelf. So um, to ensure that the, the work of the task force had not just gathered dust, so to speak, um, we got an internal audit review to, in, to, to determine where they were at with respect to the recommendations that, that came out of that task force. And I'm very happy to say that internal audit has confirmed that over 90% has actually been completed. Uh, another 7 or 8% is in train um, and currently, and there's only 1 or 2% um, percent of the recommendations that have not been actioned, and that really requires the work uh, of working very closely with another government agency. And so therefore, the timing on that has been a bit delayed. But certainly, um, you know, within three years, uh, or basically within two years of getting that report, the lion's share of all of the recommendations have been actioned. And we continue to look at ways of improving the agency. So working with the private sector, working with the people in the community, looking at increasing the resources to the agency has really been uh, some of the key areas in which we've tried to address some of the concerns. But last and certainly not least in terms of the strategy, one of the things certainly as a government that we're very concerned about is getting best value for money, getting the biggest bang for your buck. And so we really made a concerted effort to try to make sure that the various departments, the various divisions, the various agencies that fall under the various ministries that have anything to do with employment, that impacts employment in any way, that has any programs that um, impacts the employment or the employability of our people, that they're working together, singing from the same hymn book, so to speak. And so there isn't a, a, a proliferation or a wasting of resources and not necessarily having as effective um, or impact as we wanted to, to have. And so one of the first things, again, that we actually um, convened in the summer of 2014 was the Interministerial Committee on Employment. And the Interministerial Committee on Employment um, was represented or had representatives from every single ministry and every single relevant department um, who, as I said, had some impact. And as we know, employment itself even though the title falls within the Ministry of Education, Employment, and Gender Affairs, the factors affecting employment cuts across every ministry, uh, cuts across private sector, cuts across the community. Um, and so we're trying to take that holistic view. So the Interministerial Committee on Employment uh, worked over the, the, the past year, the year between the 2014 and, and 2015. And so by some of 2015, they'd, con they'd finished their work, they produced their report, and from that, they've been working, and that has really acted as a guide to help the ministries, including the Ministry of Employment, to really focus in on where we need to go next to try to increase those effectiveness and efficiency in the programs that we've produced. And as you, um, we can talk about in a little while, there's some programs that have certainly stemmed from that particular report uh, as it relates to targeted employment and training initiatives. If you look at, you take a, I think it's important that we take a step back and we look at what really is the definition of technical and vocational education and training. I mean, all people, when they think of that, they think of, um, equate that with trade schools. Uh, whereas trade schools is, is an important aspect. It is certainly not the end all be all, or it doesn't encapsulate what really the technical, vocational education and training concept includes. So really looking at what uh, UNESCO, the United Nations um, Education and Science um, Agency, they have a definition which I think is very appropriate. And it's really to say that it's those aspects of the educational process involving, in addition to uh, you know, general education, the study of technologies and related sciences and the acquisition of practical skills, attitudes, understanding and knowledge relating to occupation in various sectors of economic life. So you can see that really the definition of TVET is in, involves formal education, but it goes much further. It talks about developing skills, um, attitudes, understanding um, of any particular occupation. And the occupations itself isn't limited to any particular industry. You can have TVET programs in science, you can have TVET programs in finance, you can have TVET programs obviously in the trades and construction. So when we look at developing our uh, TVET strategy, we're looking at it from that perspective. 
And as I said, certainly we recognize the provision of institutions uh, and the provision of programs are very important. But we want to make sure that we have this focus in mind in that it's about marrying education and formal education to actually developing practical skills, marketable skills, um, interpersonal skills, uh, developmental skills that are necessary in order to be successful in that industry. So the approach to developing our TVET strategy and, and, and the various activities that we have done as a government and that we've supported has really, again, been a very multi-pronged approach. The first thing um, that we, we have done and that will be, um, I think, a first for the country is that we will recognize in law the importance of technical vocation, education, and training. And that is uh, through the Education Bill 2016, which is currently before the Legislative Assembly um, for debate, debate and adoption in the upcoming sitting. In that law, we would have the opportunity to really highlight the importance, I said, as I said, of TVET and its placement in our society and the importance that we place on ensuring that our young people develop the skills, not just the formal education, but the skills to be successful uh, when they leave school, when they go on for higher learning, or when they enter the world of work. And so by actually having it enshrined in legislation recognizes the importance um, that uh, we as a government feel that TVET should be placed. And of course, then it allows for the further development of um, the opportunities as it relates to training and education. Another important uh, strategy as it deals with um, moving the TVET agenda forward, and I know it's something that's been talked about for a while in the country, but I'm happy to say that we have actually been able to bring it together and make it happen, and that is the development and the establishment of a national training council. And that training council really acts as a advisory uh, body, but also it is responsible for participating and helping to develop the various technical and vocational education and training, uh, not just the programs, but the opportunities, but also acts as a quality assurance mechanism as well too, because we recognize that offering training for training's sake isn't necessarily the most effective and efficient use of resources. The training today must lead to some real tangible opportunities in the market. And so the National Training Council really brings together key employers, key uh, industry stakeholders, key persons in education, so uh, key, key education professionals, key persons in the area of training and development, all sitting on this council. And they are tasked with developing, as I said, the overarching kind of um, advice as it relates to policy and development in this area, but also looking at how we can better utilize the existing resources, but see where the gaps are and help us to um, fill those gaps. Now, that is something, as I said, I've spoken about on a number of occasions um, it's since taking office as one of the key things that I wanted to, to accomplish during this term in particular. And I'm happy to say that the government, uh, the cabinet has appointed the National Training Council back in June. And they've started to have their first, they had their first meeting in July. And um, they have a very exciting agenda. And I think people were very um, enthusiastic about actually now coming together and, and they're on a bit of a summer break as it speaks but will be uh, kicking off in earnest again in September and working towards achieving the, the, the terms of reference and the goals that have been set for the, the council in terms of advising myself as minister in terms of how we continue to move the uh, agenda forward. Uh, another area that is critical and also would be um, assisted by the National Training Council is um, looking at the curriculum and looking at the curriculum from um, you know compulsory school age before students leave high school uh, as it relates to you know making sure that there is a sufficient focus on um, the provision of technical and vocational education and training and making sure as I, said, as I said that that education and that training goes beyond just the formal education but looking at the skills development as well so that's a critical part we've already started to do some of that uh, over the past year and a year, two years, we have strengthened the programs offered at SIFEC. Um, we have introduced uh, programs with Cayman Finance to try to offer that education and training link uh, for the world of the financial services for students who are in the dual entry program. And we've certainly, um, you know, looked to place greater emphasis on that 
in the coming academic year as it, as it relates to the kind of provision for TVET in the schools through the plan of action that has been developed by the ministry. And uh, finally, again, as it relates to technical and vocation, education and training, the working with companies, working directly with companies in the interim. So we have the big picture is that the National Training Council will help us to develop programs going forward. But I was very keen that we didn't just wait on that process to happen because I know and I understand these things take time and it has taken time for us to actually convene that council. But certainly um, we weren't content to just sit and wait for the council to then come up with the, the recommendations. So the National Workforce Development Agency was tasked to work directly with companies to try to reach out to develop these programs um, as it relates to apprenticeships and developing internships and developing targeted training workshops, which they have done, and they've done a tremendous amount of work over the last three years in terms of actually delivering on the mandate that they were given. So that's, that's how we have approached the area of uh, technical and vocational education and training. And it's very exciting times because the seeds have been planted and we're starting to certainly see and bear fruit uh, as at this stage. From the very beginning, we were uh, very determined to start to address the issues as it relates to unemployment from the get-go. We took office at the time when unemployment was at its highest in the country. And so, you know, we knew as a, as a government this had to be a focus. And certainly as minister, it was uh, one of my key focus areas. And so within the summer of 2013, um, we looked at a particular area where we knew we, need, we had some challenges and it, it spanned both education as well as employment. And so one of the first programs that we actually launched was in the, I guess you'd call it the spring semester, so from the January to um, June semester in 2014, uh, we launched the Pastoral Support Worker Program as a pilot program. That, uh, as I said, uh, delivered on a number of objectives and that is to provide additional support in the schools itself. But it also was an employment initiative because we made sure that it was only catered to or you could only access the program if you were Caymanian in terms of becoming a pastoral support worker. And you had to obviously go through the auspices of the NWDA. So you had to be registered with the NWDA. You had to take advantage and, um, and be willing to do certain training, targeted training, because you know we're working with our children. We did provide um, the targeted training to ensure that the persons who were chosen to be the pastoral support workers had the basic level of training that they needed in order to be able to be effective in their role. So that was the first, I would say, employment program that was launched since we took office, and certainly that was well within six months of taking office um, by the time we actually launched the program in, as a pilot. Uh, the pilot program proved to be very successful, and so we have continued that program uh, to date. The schools, uh, the feedback has been very positive for the schools that actually have the pastoral support workers there. And they just act as a, as a guide to help some of those students who may be really struggling to access the curriculum, who may need, who may need a friend who can help them to, to navigate the challenges of being in school and to mediate sometimes um, between administrations or even relating to um, the home life, etc. So that was, I would say, the first kind of um, the the first employment initiative which we launched, and that was immediately upon taking office. And we have launched a program at least once a year ever since. Um, the following year, we launched, as I said, the Cayman Finance uh, Student Education and Training Program and Work Experience Program. We launched that in the spring of 2015. So that was launched, I think, in April of 2015, before the students actually started their actual examinations for that 2015 year. And that proved to be extremely successful. That pilot, we targeted 50 um, dual entry students, so students who were in year 12 of the secondary, um, the public school system, and they were either doing their A-levels or they were doing uh, their first year at UCCI. And so, um, so 50 students were given the opportunity to, to participate in workshops facilitated by people in the industry themselves. Uh, they had mentors, so they could do one-on-one. -on -one. They developed, you know, rapport, and that was key, you know, to develop those relationships that many of our students would not have had an opportunity to develop, but for this program. Uh, and then certainly the the culmination of the program was the paid internship for the, the summer, for, for a month in the summer. 
And so because of the success of that pilot in 2015, this year, uh, earlier this year, um, in, in April of this year, I believe it was as well, the, the program expanded by, you know, 150%. So we're now at 70, or 50%, I should say, we're at 75 students. Um, and now we were able to expand it beyond just the dual entry students, but to the additional 25 um, students came from the, the private schools as well. So um, you do have to be Caymanian in order to access the program. But we, we did feel, uh, and the Cayman Finance members felt that they wanted to expand the program because of the success and they felt you know, it would benefit Caymanian students regardless of where they went to school. But we certainly have maintained the focus to be on uh, making sure that as many of our public school students are given that opportunity as possible. But certainly we're happy to say that we have up to 75 students now who are participating in this uh, program and they're probably in their internships, uh, paid internships as we speak, or just finishing up their paid internships. So that's pretty much saying 75 students who otherwise would not have had, have had paid summer employment. Uh, and so, you know, that's where the employment aspect comes in. And so when we try to develop these programs, we really look at synergies. We try to develop the synergies between education and employment. And in this case, this certainly was a program that was successfully launched, as I said, in April of 2015. And we've continued and grown the program this year. Another very exciting program which has just been launched, so again launching moving to 2016, the new program that we launched as it relates to uh, targeted education, training, and employment is the Wine, um, wine School 3 bartender certification training and um, internship opportunity. And basically that's a 12-week program where the participants undergo intense uh, training and they have to sit external examinations and assuming that they pass, they will have a level two in the wine and spirits education and trust. Uh, it's a UK company and they're really seen as the world leaders as it relates to wine and spirits education and it's a well-known household name and anybody in that industry. So certainly um, the key there was to make sure that we partnered with the training institution, in this case, Wine School 3, to offer that uh, program to, in the end, it ended up being 10 participants. They had, I think, almost 20 applicants, and they had to go through an interview process. But um, they the successful applicants that went on to, to participate. Um, there's about 10, again, Caymanians. Uh, um, they're doing a 12-week program. And as a part of that program, there is the internship. So where they actually go and they work in um, either a bar, a restaurant, a hotel, uh, working as a bartender and, you know, developing those hands-on practical skills to support uh, the, the formal education in which they're they participating through the actual training aspect. So the government is supporting those students by, you know, uh, through grants to fund the, the education and training component and then the, the internships then are offered through the individual companies. And uh, there's currently six companies that are involved, but I've just been told that um, there are a number of companies looking to get involved in the next cohort. So it's so her hopefully something that we'll be able to continue to grow as well. So this was the inaugural group that just kind of kicked off in, in July. And, uh, but I certainly believe that there is great opportunity um, for this particular program to continue to develop and essentially, this could be considered the trade school of bartending because you're getting the certification, you're getting the actual practical experience working in bars, but also the school itself, the Wine 3 school, the way that their office is set up, is it's actually set up as if you are at a bar. So you, you have that experience from the time you enter into the quote-unquote classroom. And so it, it really, I think, was very clever um, in the way that they put it together. And so the students really feel immersed from day one as to what the experience would be like. And, and we know, um, based on the, the statistics, that bartending is definitely one of those areas where we have a high number of persons who are on work permit. So we know the job opportunities are there. So um, the intention, obviously, of this program is to ensure that anybody that wants to get into that industry has the right tools, can get in, and be able to then be successful and to gain employment uh, after they participate in the program. So the number of participants there now, a number of them are already in the industry. Some of them are looking to get into the industry. Some of them just have an interest in wine and spirits. So uh, it'll be interesting to see at the end of the program how many actually then decide to go on to, to try their hand or even move into the area of bartending. Um, so that's kind of the national internship program. 
we also, and you would have heard me speak uh, often about the desire to develop the national apprenticeship program for the country. Again, one of the key things that you know, I campaigned on and I pushed to try to bring to fruition um, during this tenure. And, and certainly, we have been successful in delivering on that as well. Uh, we, in April of this year, we were able to work very closely with the construction company, Tweed Construction Company, to offer a, a tiler, uh, a technician, who is somebody who's working in the area of tiles and working under what is known as a master tiler. And it's a three-year apprenticeship program. And they actually participate in, again, internationally recognized um, certification uh, course. So by the end of the program, the person would, ha would have the sufficient uh, skills and certification to then go on and act as um, this, this tiler, this tiler technician in the industry. And so um, the, there is a, a review coming up, and, and I'm looking forward to hearing how the, the young man is doing. Um, it's, it's, it's one position so far. But again, it was in an area, of course, of, of construction. And we know um, with all of the projects that are getting all, all on the way now, um, there is great opportunities there as well. And so there is a big push, and there is a big thrust to try to develop even more of these types of apprenticeships in this particular area as well. Um, but as I said, we're very happy that we were able to develop this program in partnership with Tweed Construction. It is a paid intern. It's a paid apprenticeship, where, whereas they they are um, getting paid by the company, and also do the training is sponsored, um, you know, through that auspices as well. But the the opportunity was was developed in collaboration with the National Workforce Development Agency, the Training and Development Unit. And you would have seen most recently the. Um, communication about the health city, um, the health care administrator apprenticeship scheme. And so that is a, a partnership between health city and the NWDA as it relates to um, providing three persons with the ability to become you know, trained and, 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 and qualified health care administrators. And, and so the similar to um, the wine three school bartending program, the apprenticeship is, a, is in, in this case, it's a year long. And the participation in terms of the employment side is paid by Health City. And they're given the actual you know, job experience. But the training aspect of it uh, is, is supported by the government through grants. And so again, this is where we're showing the, the fact that the government is looking to support the training and development. But we're looking to make sure that going forward, it is very targeted and it's leading to actual employment opportunities. And so that's why the, 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 the apprenticeship programs and apprenticeship um, schemes such as this, I think, is very important. And we're very happy to say that we have now uh, really started to make a dent on um, this uh, national apprenticeship program, which has been a goal. And certainly, um, we have delivered on these two thus far. And in the wings, never one to be satisfied with just um, you know, what we've accomplished thus far. In the wings, we do have another uh, media apprenticeship. Uh, it's, it's an opportunity for somebody who we're working and, and speaking very closely with a company that wants to offer this type of um, experience for, for Caymanians who are serious about getting into journalism. And so um, you know, we're, we will be launching something very similar in this vein as well. So we're certainly um, continuing to develop these programs directly between the NWDA and the companies. Um, but we do look forward to the work of the National Training Council to help to support that work as well. And um, there is the program of the Ready to Work. As you know, we launched that earlier this year. The Ready to Work program came directly as a result of the kinds of information that came out of the Interministerial Committee on Employment the report that I talked about earlier. Uh, some of the, the concerns that were expressed both by the employees as well as the employers led to the kind of development and structuring of this particular program, which is a partnership between the government and the private sector as it relates to um, providing the job opportunities. Uh, we, we, we recognize that a number of people who are looking for work may not necessarily be uh, completely ready in the sense that they may have certain issues that they need to improve upon, be it interview skills, be it um, you know, anger management, be it 
and, you know, just interpersonal skills, being able to relate to um, people in, on the job. Uh, how do you manage your own personal life and not making your personal life become a part of your, you know, experience on the job? These kinds of things. So there is, there is those type of barriers which are relatively easy to manage given the right type of support. Um, which the Ready to Work program is really geared towards helping people to access and keep employment. Uh, and so the, the program has, was you know, kicked off in earnest in April and um, it is a rolling program. So every week, every two weeks, there, the numbers increase in terms of people participating in the program. Uh, the latest count that I have is we have about 60 persons who have gone through the first two weeks of training. Cause, so the program involves two intense weeks of training and then from there, then they look to do the matching of um, the companies with the persons who have completed, successfully completed the first two weeks. And about half of those are now um, placed in employment. So uh, the numbers are looking very good so far in terms of the, the success of the program. Uh, obviously, we're still in the pilot phase, but um, you know, we, are, we are looking to, to try to address those type of issues and helping people with who fall within that kind of category for whatever reason, they're just not catching a break, uh, not getting into the you know, um, workforce for you know, either because of redundancy or as I said, these kind of minor barriers as it, on the spectrum of barriers as far as it goes that can be supported through this type of, um, type of program. So that certainly is something that the government has invested very heavily in trying to support and we're very happy with the response from the private sector, people have stepped up. I think there's about almost 40 companies who are involved in the program and hopefully that number will continue to grow because as I said, the program itself is a rolling program. So people will, um, every two weeks there's a, a new cohort, so to speak. So we will constantly need to identify additional positions in order to do the appropriate matches. Well, I think really, I would say anybody that is trying to make that claim is not either have not been informed about all that has gone on in this space since we took office. And certainly programs such as this will help to inform them and disabuse them of that idea. Uh, and of course, you know, there may be people that are using it for their own political gain in political mileage, so they're you know, not necessarily interested in being informed. Um, but certainly the, you know, the government, as I've, I've tried to kind of very painstakingly outline all of the work that we have been doing and the commitment that we've been doing, and we see it. We see it in, the, in terms of the unemployment rate has dropped dramatically. We are the lowest rate uh, ever since 2007, which was our heyday of our economic heyday before the, um, before the recession. So we're back down to those numbers. So that is a testament that things are happening. Uh, as I said, we've, we've got a number of tangible programs that have benefited real people um, to show for all of the efforts. And it's certainly not something that started yesterday. Uh, we planted the seeds, we developed, we launched from as early as spring 2014, and we've been developing and launching programs ever since. And we continue to support programs that preceded us as well because we know um, it's very important to, to, to take a, a mature view to politics in my, in, my, in my estimation. If something is working well, you look to support, you look to augment, you look to improve. Um, but if something isn't working well, then you look to fix. And so that's really the way and that's really the focus that um, certainly as Minister of Employment and Education and in Gender Affairs that I've taken to how we, we look to do the work in the ministry and I would say the government as a whole understands and appreciates that so for anybody that thinks this is just a Johnny come lately type of, uh, of effort I would say certainly just log on to the Ministry of Education's website www.education.gov.ky you'll see our summary of our various annual reports and, and, and yeah just listen to this program because hopefully you'll learn by the end of this program all that has gone on and all that we've actually done from day one to start to really address the issue of unemployment. And as I said, we've certainly seen progress in not just the numbers, but in the general feel of many people who have been working uh, with the agency, with the government in order to um, achieve their personal goals of, of employment and employment satisfaction.
the NWDA works, um, has a program where they work directly with uh, Her Majesty's prison to um, identify training opportunities. And so one of the things that they're doing right now is that they're actually um, working with the prison to do an evaluation of their kind of TVET program to see, again, going back to the vision for TVET and making sure that training is offered that leads to tangible skills, that leads to um, recognized certification in the industry. And so by, by taking that same focus and looking at what's offered in the prison, hopefully um, the, the offerings going forward would be more targeted, would be more focused, would be more effective at helping to identify where the interests lie amongst the, the prisoners. I mean, I think that's very important, but also where the job opportunities are and matching and marrying the two um, is, is, is an important aspect of, of what they're trying to do and what they're trying to achieve by actually revamping the, the TVET program at the prisons. And as I said, the NWD is working very closely with the prison service in order to try to achieve that. Uh, the government is also very keen, and I certainly um, you know, will personally continue to encourage that the legislation to support um, you know, persons reintegrating into the society, some of the barriers that they may have as it relates to criminal records and otherwise, uh, that is something that the government is very keen to try to address uh, during this administration as well too. And I understand that the legislation is kind of being finalized now and hopefully we'll be able to um, bring that to the Legislative Assembly for debate in the near future. And so certainly a combination of um, you know, improving the legislative environment to improve their chances, but also making sure that targeted training programs are leading to certifications that the industries and the market wants and recognizes, but also um, making sure that there is that marriage between the skill set that needs to be developed during the program as well. And so they're hoping to have something um, to be able to roll out a kind of new program by the latter part of uh, this year in that, in that regard. Well, there's a number of training workshops actually um, offered by the NWDA and the best way to really find out what those are is to um, register with the NWDA itself and log online. They often have um, information about the training workshops that are being offered and the workshops that are coming up um, in the near future. They go anywhere from accounting to interview skills to resume writing to management skills. I mean, there is, there is, and then again, there was, um, you know, food and beverage serving, handling, uh, the, it really does uh, cover the gamut. So these workshops are kind of like one-off, uh, short training, training opportunities that um, allow people to just, if they want to get it, you know, maybe even wet their feet in an area before they continue to invest any further time or energy, um, they may, they'll, they'll have the opportunity to do that, as well as upskilling themselves. So I just recently um, participated in the celebration of our, a cohort that just finished a color accounting, which is a particular accounting program that is sponsored by the Fund Administrators Association. And so there is great partnerships. Again, a big plank of this government is developing these public-private partnerships. And so the NWDA has developed good partnerships with the uh, community at large to not just offer these training programs, because many, in many instances, the training programs are delivered by people in the industry itself, but also to sponsor the participation of the Caymanians who um, were able to participate in the training programs in this regard. Well, I think in terms of a summary number, um, the latest number that I was provided, and again, that, um, that changes on a week by week or a day by day basis, we've had uh, approximately 1,200 people who have participated and attended approximately 130 training workshops and offered through the NWDA in the past year, the 2015-2016 uh, fiscal year. So the, the, the agency has been extremely busy in developing, promoting, and offering training workshops uh, to, as I said, a, a large number of people in the community. And, um, you know, we've had anywhere from about uh, 50 soft skills and technical workshops, and that's had about 340 attendees. Uh, we've caught over 60 uh, are ready to work related particular type training sessions, 
and the numbers of attendees there are close to 700 persons. And we've had a number of workshops in the BRAC as well, um, as well as attendees, because again, going back to the district focus, we, we you know, especially for uh, the sister islands, um, we, we, we make sure that we try to provide the training workshops uh, as best as possible in their communities as well. And we've had a number of workshops, uh, approximately 20 workshops or so at Northwood Prison and Fairbanks. And the, the number of participants there have been uh, roughly 140. So we've, we've, we've had uh, a quite substantial number of persons participating in the various workshops offered by the NWDA. And again, if we go back to the, the mission of the NWDA, really there, there seems to be a lot of confusion in the market sometimes about what the NWDA's role is. But one of their primary roles is to be a facilitator of training and development of people in order to be able to access and to progress in employment. And so facilitating these type of uh, opportunities is key uh, and, and primary to the mandate of the agency. And so a big emphasis and focus is on helping our people develop the skills or access the skills and tools and workshops either through the NWDA directly or working with the partners the private sector, public sector partners in providing these opportunities. Well, there are a number of ways in which somebody can um, participate in the programs. Uh, they can register directly with the NWDA, either doing so online if they feel comfortable, they have access to computer, have access to internet, uh, want to do so in their communities through the through the um, district libraries. You can you know, upload the documentation information and do everything online. Uh, if you're not uh, comfortable doing that or you feel you need some assistance, there is also the opportunity to come into the office, which is in Midtown Plaza, uh, right above the, the coffee shop there. Uh, and they're, they're, they do accept walk-ins, and so there would be somebody that can at least give you some guidance. I think you still would need to then register online because they've moved to a quote unquote paperless system as it relates to registration, but you can have the, the assistance of somebody by actually going into the office. Um, you can also take advantage of the district um, meetings or the district uh, clinics that they offer on a monthly basis. So if you're not able to get into town and you still want to have the support, uh, a one-on-one -on -one support of an officer, you can do so by actually visiting uh, the district uh, clinics when they do come out to the various districts on, on the monthly basis, as I said. Yes, I, I really want to um, say thank you for, for hosting me here today and giving me the opportunity to really give the public the not just the bird's eye view, but the very uh, drill down view as to all of the work um, that has gone on since we took office in May 2013, uh, to explain the kind of methodology that we followed in order to uh, make sure that we approach the issue of employment and unemployment and skills development and training from a very holistic perspective. So, uh, and I think it was important that at this stage in in uh, or the you know in our tenure as a, as a government, uh, we're able to really say and plot the not just where the path that we took to get here, but also giving some indication as to how and where we're going to continue to go. And certainly, um, as I said, it's been, it's been quite a journey and I think we've, we have achieved a, a lot, a substantial amount of work has gone on in the last three years. Uh, we have started, and as I said, we're starting to see the fruit of that labor and it's coming fast and furious on a number of areas. But certainly, um, you know, our commitment is to continue to put the emphasis and focus on making sure that we address not just the short, but also the medium and long-term needs as it relates to developing our people and ensuring the sustainability of the country. And so um, all of the work that we do, and certainly all of the work that we do within the Ministry of Education, Employment and Gender Affairs is working towards that goal.